Hi, I'm Amy Fullman. I'm the Director of Creative Forces uh, National Resource Center, and today I'm here with Sarah Cass, uh, the Senior Military Medical Advice Advisor for Creative Forces. So thank you so much for being with me today, Sarah. The Creative Forces Network established its creative arts therapy activities in partnership with military sites in 2012. So over the past eight years, what have been the most important historical milestones on the clinical side? Yeah, thanks, Amy. Um, I, boy, there's so many. Um, I, I think that without a doubt, one of the very one of the very first most important things was just expanding from the small program we had at the NICO in 2012 down to Fort Belvoir to see that what worked at at the NICO, the National Intrepid Center of Excellence in Bethesda, um, the clinical work we were doing with creative arts therapists in that program worked at Fort Belvoir and was also impactful mm -hmm. with that patient population. And I think just that small um, sort of lean experiment of can you take it someplace else and scale it um, demonstrated the, the value of this. And we were so fortunate to receive some additional funding in 2016 mm -hmm. to allow us to expand to an additional uh, 11 sites, I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. And that growth was just so, so important in giving visibility to this initiative. And I think it's at, at that point that we expanded from being the Walter Reed NEA partnership to the Creative Forces Network. And so that was definitely a really important time in history to grow clinically much larger. But I think a couple of other things that obviously are, you know, also very, very important have been um, the addition of community engagement as a really important part of the, the entire Creative Forces program where we uh, were able to really take advantage of the relationship of the National Endowment for the Arts' connection to state arts agencies, and then build around our local clinical programs into those local communities and create that warm handoff of care um, and engagement with the arts for health and well-being. So the summits that we held in 2017, 2018, I think, were another big milestone and really important part of our time. Um, Research, there's no shortage of important <laughs> research. I'm sure we'll talk more about that um, as, we, as we go through our, our time together today. But um, bringing on a clinical research advisor and Dr. Donna Betts and having you know, the, the growth of our research program to include now 19 publications has been really monumental. And of course, now the most exciting final big piece to this three-part mission of clinical care, community engagement, and capacity building is the development of the National Resource Center. So having this platform and you as our director um, is another really important milestone. So um, we're very excited for this. Creative Forces currently has 24 creative arts therapists representing art therapy, music therapy, and dance movement therapy located at Department of Defense and Veteran Affairs sites. What has been the value of working with these national military partners? Oh gosh, you know, I. I think what's so important is to, to remember that the Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs were already investing in creative arts therapies long before creative forces existed. So the, the two departments already knew of the value of the creative arts therapies, but I think in working collaboratively with them, with creative forces, we've been able to, to kind of elevate our ability to try to understand the impact of these therapies. And in order to do that, we really need to, to gain access. We need to have more places that are engaging in creative arts therapies so that we can engage in research to further understand the value in a, and the impact of, of these therapies. So our partnership with the DOD and the VA provides us, number one, access to patients, a place where we can do what we believe is making a difference and to um, expand the opportunities to understand that. The second is leadership. Uh, you know, at every one of our clinical sites, I work with a clinical leader who helps to support that creative arts therapist in their clinical program and embeds them into their interdisciplinary teams. And, and they're such strong champions for the work that the creative arts therapists are doing because they see firsthand the difference that these therapies are making in our patients' lives. And so they become that champion and the leader to help us grow the program at each of the locations. And I think, I think the last is just kind of continued investment, investment in what we're trying to accomplish 
with uh, creative forces to really understand the value and the impact of the arts, um, to support us through uh, allowing us the physical space where our clinicians can do their work, the, the collaborative investment in research, not just in um, the research structure and support, but scientists at each of these facilities who are engaging alongside us to help us do the research and understand what's going on. And as we grow their own investment in more creative arts therapists, we're seeing that grow across the network and that's, um, that's certainly good for our initiatives as well. So what have been the most meaningful insights of the Creative Forces Clinical Network to date? I had, you know, when I was, I was, before I was the senior military medical advisor for Creative Forces, I was the director of the National Intrepid Center of Excellence or NICO in Bethesda. And while I was there, first of all, I'm going to admit a little bit that before I took that job, I wasn't as aware of what creative arts therapies are and who, they, who those therapists are and the role they play in our clinical team. And so I really personally became very educated um, by people like Melissa Walker and Rebecca Baudre and others who have helped me to learn what creative arts therapists can do and how they can expand um, the way we provide care to our, to our patients. Um, during that time, I think one of the things that I learned and have carried with me throughout the time I've worked with this project is the creative arts therapies aren't a nice to have component of care that sits at the side waiting for somebody who's got some extra time or who used to like doing art or music. Um, they are a need to have capacity of a really well-rounded interdisciplinary care program. Our creative arts therapists help us to gain insight into what's going on with our patients. They help us to really formulate an understanding and conceptualize what they're struggling with. And, and they're such a vital role of, of the treatment of our patients. And so when I retired from the Navy and I was thinking, what do I do next? It was so clear to me that I wanted to be a part of helping the, helping other clinicians like myself to understand the value and the impact of, of what these therapies can do. So from the very beginning, I think one of the important things is it's a need to have capability, not a nice to have thing that exists on the side. But I think the other, when I think about kind of the insights I've learned from this, we like to alliterate with C's and creative forces, right? Um, we talk about clinical community engagement and capacity. Well, for me, another alliteration with C's is um, connection, um, creation, and control. I think one of the things that the creative arts therapies allow us to do is they really allow a connection. Sometimes that connection is between the patient and the therapist. Um, sometimes it's to the other patients who are going through a treatment program with them to understand they're not alone. Many times it's reconnecting to their family but engaging in the arts creates that sense of connection or again, tribe. Um, many times what I think our service members feel like they've lost is that sense of connection to a unit when they're injured and, and reestablishing a sense of connection is an important part of what we do in the creative arts therapies. The second thing is creation. The first thing, I'm a family physician. So the first thing I, I try not to do this anymore, but oftentimes one of the first things a doctor will do to you is say, What's wrong with you? How can I help you? And it's not a position most service members or veterans really want to be in. We're not used to wanting or needing help. Um, we're very proud and strong. And creative arts therapies put you in a position of creator, of the person who is now focusing on what you can do as opposed to what you can't do, and allowing you to, to take your strengths and do more with it, whether that be in the creation of a song or a dance or art and in that you you tap into the strength that then allows you to also use your strengths to recreate yourself and to build your your resilience and your strength and your ability to do things as well as that relationship with your family so i think that's really important and the last is control um, the arts give the creator control over their narrative and their ability to tell their story the way that they need to tell their story. And I think that's such an important part of, especially in the work with trauma and processing trauma, to be able to allow uh, the, the individual to tell the story in a way that 
they feel comfortable with, that they can use in a trusting relationship with their therapist. But then that story that is shared in that environment can also then help them to tell their story to other therapists and engage more fully in other forms of therapy. Maybe to tell their family, to help them to rebuild that family relationship. Um, certainly, I think we're learning a lot in the arts about the story it tells society about what we're dealing with, and that story is so important. And I think all of these things together are really the cornerstones of helping us to um, return people to duty or to help them transition to that new healthy life after their time in the military. Um, so I think those are some of the most meaningful insights for me. We all know that the world has changed for everyone um, in the past couple of months. Um, so how has Creative Forces clinical team been affected by and adapted to the COVID-19 environment? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird world nowadays, isn't it? Um, nothing quite feels um, like it did before, but I think one of the things that artists probably do, probably better than many other professions I can think of is adapt, innovate, make sense of things, make meaning out of it. Um, and I think our creative arts therapists have really tapped into that same spirit to, the, to not just their clinical side, but to their creative side of coming up with new ways to do things and new ways to be helpful. Um, I, I think there's two really important parts of what we have done as a response to COVID. Um, the first, we're, we're very fortunate that we were, even before, uh, anybody knew the words COVID-19. Um, we had partnered with the Rural Veterans Tele-Rehabilitation Initiative, or RVTRI, out of Gainesville, Florida, the VA there in Gainesville. This program is, is supported by the Office of Rural Health for the VA. And it, it looks at how we can use telehealth to expand access out to rural veterans. And we had partnered with RVTRI to look at how creative arts therapies could be offered um, via telehealth, from a hospital to a, to a patient at another hospital at a different location, or from a patient in a hospital to a, a patient at home, or I'm sorry, a provider in a hospital to a patient at home. And, you know, it's, it's not easy. There are things like um, latency on the sound when you're trying to do music therapy that are challenges, but they can be overcome, figuring out new ways to um, engage that patient in music therapy, looking to other interventions that maybe would be more helpful in that circumstance. And we were starting to learn about these things when COVID-19 hit, and so we very quickly, fortunately, with the support of that team in Gainesville, Florida, and the innovative nature of our own creative arts therapists, we went from having two sites that were doing telehealth to about eight sites right away that were able to offer telehealth visits to their patients. And so I think that's such an important component of continuing care um, via teletechnology. And I think it's something that is here to stay. Um, we may not be doing it forever um, as a 100% solution, but I think telehealth is something we're going to rely on more going forward. And so I think that continuing to build on that expertise is something that will be really important. And actually just this week, we were able to publish an article on music therapy via telehealth in the Journal of Rehabilitative Medicine. So um, it's exciting to be in this and be at sort of the front edge of how creative arts therapists are thinking about this. But I think the other part is about what I would call telearts engagement. Um, again, artists around the country not in clinical settings, but just artists in general are learning how to continue to give pottery lessons or painting lessons or engage people in uh, ukulele or all kinds of different things to keep them engaged in the arts for health and wellness. And we need that now more than ever. And our own creative arts therapists have said this also is in their realm of what they can do. And so we have been engaging with a number of projects to enhance our offering of tele-arts engagement activities and specifically to healthcare teams, looking at who are those teams who are caring for the patients who are impacted by COVID-19 and can we provide some respite and some care and um, resilience skills, coping skills to that workforce that is bearing quite a burden right now. And so we've been, uh, there's a project out of the National Intrepid Center of Excellence in Walter Reed called Project Oasis. 
and we've been really excited to be a part of Project Oasis and think about how we might engage even a wider network of, of our team across the nation to support healthcare providers, patients, former patients, whomever wants to take advantage of it through arts engagement. So that's been another exciting change. Knowing that the future is a bit uncertain at the moment, um, in five years, if Creative Forces continues to be successful in treating military connected populations exposed to trauma, what will the clinical team have achieved? I, I think definitely the most important thing in our future for the next five to 10 years even is, is what we achieve with regards to research. That doesn't mean we don't continue to really focus our energies on delivering high quality clinical care and learning from each other across this network about how to do that even better than we're doing it now. Constantly, as you said, we are a learning endeavor. How can we learn more about how to do this better? And during that time, we must stay relevant with the clinical programs that are being offered. Again, if everything were to transition to telehealth and, and we weren't a part of it, then that we would lose our relevance and that would be a problem. So we have to stay clinically excellent and clinically relevant throughout this whole time. But I think for creative forces, the most important thing we can do is conduct exceptional research that helps to demonstrate the value and the impact of the creative arts therapies for the patient population we're engaging with to support the idea that the DOD, the VA, the private sector continues to invest in these therapies and makes them more accessible to even more patients. So we'll need to be conducting uh, you know, some good solid research studies around um, probably art and music therapy, dance movement therapy as we go forward um, in prospective hypothesis-based ways using outcome measures that all clinicians recognize and can say, yes, that, that definitely is demonstrating that there is value there. If we can do that, if in five years, I am maybe retired again and um, sitting on my boat and reading about creative forces, that will be the thing that we will have done to have really achieved success is advance the research around the, the value of these activities. Um, and that's, that's alongside building out this clinic to community network and putting these resources out so that more people can um, learn from what we're doing in Creative Forces. We can't let our foot off the gas on the other things while we advance that research mission, but I think that's really gonna be the most important thing we can do. Great, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your experience working with this network over the past, um, how long has it been now for you? Oh, five, five years, seven years? Five years directly, but um, two or three before that when I was on active duty. And um, uh, Rebecca, our lead music therapist, always says teamwork makes the dream work. And it's just so true. I mean, whatever it is in life that we're trying to improve, advance, it really doesn't happen by anybody making it happen by themselves. It's it's a heavy lift by a lot of people and so I get to be the one today who sits here and tells you about great work that's being done but my job is just to take the ripples out of the water so that the creative arts therapists in the field can do the amazing work so for me it's it's kudos to our team of creative arts therapists for all that they do for their compassion their creativity and their excellence and I can't think of a better job than to be able to work with creative forces so thanks for giving me the chance to talk about it a little bit today Amy. Thank you so much. I too feel very honored to be part of this network and I'm so excited that we have this National Resource Center that is bringing together all the wonderful work and, and really important insights um, together so that we can look at the patterns and continue to evolve as a network to expand the, uh, the impact. So thank you so very much.